Hey everybody, it's Colby from Southeast 4x4 Trails. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through a great, relatively low cost project for your Jeep hardtop uh, that really gives the interior a nice finished feel. So part one, uh, two, this is gonna be a two video series. The first video will be about how to paint the interior of the hardtop and part two will be about how to make a custom headliner for it. So you can find both videos on the Southeast 4x4 Trails YouTube channel. And please go ahead and click that subscribe button if you find this uh, video helpful. Uh, and also check out southeast4x4trails.com for more articles and, and content similar to this. So here's what the finished product looks like. So I chose a nice charcoal, kind of dark charcoal color for the uh, headliner material. You can see it starts in the front, extends all the way to the back where the uh, rear windshield is. And the top is painted black. So it uh, really blends, actually blends in with the uh, pads on the roll bar cover. So that's what it looks like from the front and then coming around to the back. Gives you a better view of the painted hardtop, the headliner, and let's go ahead and get started on the work. We will be painting the inside of the interior of the hardtop black just to get a, a little nicer finish and feel in the, in the interior. Uh, my Jeep is a 2004 Rubicon, so it is a TJ. So if you're uh, following along and maybe doing this on a JK or JL or JT, uh, steps may be kind of you know somewhat different, but as far as the painting goes, the, the same general things should apply. Um, but you can see I've got the top secured on top of this cart, so you just using ratchet straps on each side. Nothing too tight. You know, you, this is kind of a fiberglass type material. Don't want to damage that. Um, the ratchet strap is got a cloth here as well, protecting it from uh, scratching the glass, but. I've already taken the rear windshield off, the rear glass off that's so sitting on the ground here. Uh, you can see there's two struts that you'll need to, to undo, and there's also the motor for the windshield wiper and the uh, wiper fluid supply line. So on the TJ hardtop, you've got four bolts here and here. Uh, look like this. When you take them out, uh, use a, a 10 millimeter wrench to, to get those off. Um, you'll want to slide this little red tab over and then press down to remove the plug from the wiper motor. And then just gently pull the hose here that supplies the windshield wiper fluid. Um, and all of that actually sits behind this, this plastic case. So there's three Phillips head screws there. Just undo those and this, this piece will pop right off. Um, and then you'll want to undo the uh, windshield defrost connections as well. They slide on, there's a little tab on the top there. Just push it down and gently pull those out. Um, so, you know, probably I had a piece of, um, or I had a sawhorse underneath, underneath the glass and also had somebody holding it, uh, while I was taking everything, taking all the bolts out and getting it ready to, to pull off. So, um, don't try and do it by yourself because you're probably liable to drop, drop it, you know, use something to support it or put a sawhorse or something similar like that, um, underneath when you start removing the bolts. Um, coming around to the front, uh, there are two latches. Uh, that need to be removed as well, so you can you, know, you can get paint in here. Uh, these are T25 Torx bits, so there's two. Be careful when you take these out because they can be they can be kind of tight, and it looks like from the factory they had some blue Loctite on them. Um, so just be careful. Take those out slowly, and, and you should be fine. Uh, but remove both of the latches, and then the next step will be to prep uh, prep for the paint. So. I'm gonna get that going and we'll be back shortly to go over all the prep steps. To mask the hard top, you'll need a couple of basic items. So this first is masking paper, uh, run in the mill. You can pick this up at Home Depot. It's just a very thin paper. Uh, we'll use that to mask the windows off. Um, you, this is optional, but it helps particularly with the windows. So this is a squeegee tool. It's usually used for like putting stickers or decals uh, onto a car, uh, got this from Amazon. It's only a couple of dollars, handy to have. Uh, and then some masking tape. So this is just uh, 3M painters masking tape, um, Scotch blue number 2090, inch and a half in, in width. Um, and then you'll need an X-Acto knife and X-Acto blade. So it helps to put a fresh blade on a brand new one, make nice clean uh, sharp cuts. And it's also helpful to have a pin around just to, in case you need to make any marks 
uh, on the tape where you're going to cut it and trim it.
Uh, one of the thing I was cutting with was this small X-Acto knife. So this is really handy for when you put the masking paper up on the window, you'll see here that on the TJ hardtop, there's a bit of a crack there or a gap in between the molding and the glass. So as you can see the, from the way the tape's put on here, I was trying to slide that tape up under this molding to protect the glass that's underneath it. Um, so one way to do that is, you know, as you saw in the video, go ahead and tape the uh, masking paper up. But like right here, it was a little bit harder to get the tape into the molding or in between the molding and the window. So I'll just come back and use you know, this fine tip of the X-Acto knife to cut that out. And then I actually was using this squeegee tool. So this is for, uh, usually you use when you're putting stickers on the vehicle, but this little um, edge right here makes it easier to get in, in between the, the molding and the glass itself. Um, so basically just do that, take your time. Um, what I'm gonna do is come back here and just make sure all these little gaps where I can see black are fully covered. So that'll protect the paint from getting on the glass. Um, and that will pretty much get your windows masked up and ready to paint. All right, now that we've got all the masking done, we need to scuff up the hard top. So to do that, we're gonna use these 3M uh, ultra fine pads. So these are 3M part number 7448, they're gray. I have two of these, um, probably only need one, but we've got two in case we need it. And also I'm gonna uh, dip the pads in this, this is basically just dish soap and hot water. So I picked these pads up and the paint we're gonna use at a local auto body store or uh, auto paint store. And that was one of the recommendations that they gave is to use the soapy water when you're scuffing up the, uh, scuffing up the top. So we're gonna do that. Um, I've got some acetone. We will apply that to the top after we finish scuffing it up with the, with the warm water. And then finally, we're going to paint it using this Sim Trim Black paint. So based on the research I've done and uh, from other people that have painted their hard tops, this is supposed to be the best paint you can buy. Um, it's you know, basically OEM or you know, factory grade paint. Uh, again, Trim Black. And the uh, part number there's 39143. And I'll add some links to each one of these in the, uh, in the description as well. And I picked up one of these, um, it's a rust oleum, basically a uh, paint handle that's, that the uh, spray paint fixes to. So we're gonna give that a shot and see if that makes things a little bit easier.
finished with the scuff pad and putting the acetone on. So as you saw in the video, I ended up going back over the hard top with the second dry scuff pad, just for good measure. Um, and when I put the acetone on, I just poured a little bit into this paint container and used a brush to brush it on. Um, couple of notes on that. So the blue paper towel was like pretty much just getting eaten up by the uh, acetone and leaving little pieces of blue on, on the top. So I ended up using one of the red shop towels, that one's cloth, um, and then just wipe that, wipe it down as, as you apply the acetone. So it dries pretty fast. One other thing from doing the soap, so the soap gets in these little grooves right here and you can't really tell that. So that's why I was using the air compressor to blow everything off. So if you have a compressor, use it, blow all the little particles and pieces that come off um, on the top. I hit it first with about 50 PSI and then cranked it up to 100 just to go back over everything one more time. So let it dry for about 40 minutes and we're gonna start applying the paint.
probably noticed about halfway through painting the top, I put this uh, respirator face mask on. So yeah, I had the doors, garage doors closed. They were like cracked just a little bit at the bottom. And the reason I was doing that is because I painted some pieces in the past and the residue from the paint carried over and is actually on the hood of my truck. And it's, I don't, it's, I don't know how I'm gonna get it off at this point. So that's why I had the doors to the garage uh, you know, just cracked. Um, it got, you know, a lot of the paint residue got really thick in here while I was painting just, you know, because of the amount of paint was laying down. So it really is a good idea to wear one of these. Um, it's the 3M half, half face, piece, yeah, face piece mask, uh, part 7502. Uh, I got a size medium. And then these also from 3M uh, P100 filters, uh, like I said, part, part number 92091. So I'll put a link to those in the in the um, in the description as well. But uh, that really is a good idea to wear if you you know you're going to be painting in a kind of enclosed area or somewhere that's not very well built. Okay, I've laid down three full coats of paint at this point, and when you kind of get up close here, look at how well the paint lays down. It may be a little bit hard to see with the sun, but you can tell this you know the sim paint really is high quality. Uh, so the in terms of applying the paint. So Sim recommends you do two to three coats, wet coats, uh, and there's a five minute flash time in between each coat. And what flash time means is that's the amount of time to let the paint uh, sit before applying the next coat so all these solvents can evaporate. So uh, for the most part, I tried to do three, you know, one full pass, one full coat, wait five minutes, then apply the next coat, um, had to you know, speed up a little bit on, on towards the front just to make sure I was getting the full coverage. Uh, but so far, it's looking pretty good. There are two things, though, I wanted to point out. So the first is over here on the corner. So you can see that there some of the paint would not adhere there. So when I sprayed it, the paint pretty much would just slide right down into the bottom <clears throat> where you kind of see those marks, um, and it wouldn't stick to the to the top. So I talked to one of the guys at the local auto, uh, automotive paint store where I got the sim paint and he suggested trying lacquer thinner. Um, so put a little bit of lacquer thinner on there. There's something in the hard top material or a coating or something there that's preventing the tape or, or uh, sorry, preventing the paint from adhering. Um, so idea, I'm gonna take a little lacquer thinner, put it on that spot, give it about five minutes. It dries very quickly and then try and apply the paint again. Um, one thing, if you do need to use that lacquer thinner, make sure you wear gloves. It's highly toxic uh, and it can, it can damage your liver or if you don't know, really get it on your skin. So, <clears throat> so we're gonna try that. Um, one other thing that I've noticed here, I'm gonna walk around towards the back, is <clears throat> if you look right here, you can see these, uh, we'll call them marks. So when I take my hand, and just rub it against the paint, the paint's fully dry. You can see that um, residue on my finger there. I let the paint or the top and the paint dry uh, completely overnight. So I tried rubbing a little rag, like basically uh, old t-shirt material, and it looks like it's, it pulls that residue off. So I'm gonna do that across the entire top. Um, hopefully that'll get rid of all the residue. So those are the next steps. Okay, it's been about five minutes, so I'm gonna use this t-shirt uh, material rag to check and see if this is dry. I don't wanna to touch it with my hand, so I've got on a plastic um, glove. So we're just gonna dab it a couple of times here. I'm not seeing any kind of liquid or anything on the rag. So it looks like everything's good and dry, no real paint coming off either. So let's try the paint. Make sure you shake the paint up for 30 seconds, uh, maybe a minute before you try and reapply it. Yeah, and so you can see here how all the paint is running off at the bottom. It's it's still not uh, sticking to the 
the plastic on the So thankfully I was able to get the paint to stick to the problem area. As you can see here, so the way I ended up doing it was applying multiple very light coats. Uh, so I'd spray a very light coat. Um, a little bit of that coat would ad adhere and stick to the plastic. So spray the coat, give it five minute flash or five minute dry time, uh, and then apply another coat. So my working theory is that with each coat, a little more of the paint sticks each time. Um, and then by ap applying, I think I did 10 or 11 white coats, um, and then you know, basically resprayed most of the area here. So from, you know, from the, the end of the window molding to the rear of the window molding, a little more of the paint would stick each time. Um, I did end up towards the, towards like the ninth or 10th coat. Um, I did use my heat gun here, uh, to apply a little bit of heat and also hold it pretty far away. So I had it, you know, about like this. Um, I didn't use a lot of that because the heat it started, uh, the paint started bubbling a little bit when, when, uh, I had the, the heat, you know, the heat got closer to, to the paint. So I think what that did also was to kind of speed up the dry time a little bit more and get it to, to adhere, um, and not pull as much. So, you know, as you, you can see in the, you know, earlier in the video, I'd spray the paint and roll down or pull down at the bottom of the, you know, the window molding right there. So apply the heat that kind of gets it more tacky, a little quicker. Um, and, it ended up actually minimizing the pulling a pretty good to a pretty good extent. So, so that's done. Um, you know, the lacquer thinner may have helped. Um, you know, just to get those initial coats, those light coats to stick. Um, you know, but I think really, other main takeaway here is it just reemphasizes the importance of doing good prep. So make sure you scuff it up well. You clean uh, the top. You know, with the acetone um, very thoroughly and hopefully you know you can avoid having that uh, happen happen on your uh, hard top as well anyways okay so here's the finished top it's all painted up paints dry let it paint overnight um, I went over it with the uh, another one of those t-shirt rags to get the residue off sprayed it out with the air gun um, a little more or just after I after I cleaned it with the uh, with a rag just to get off any any small pieces of lint. So the next step is to put the hardware belt on and I'm actually going to make a headliner, a custom headliner to go in here. So get the headliner installed and get it back on the Jeep.